Hello, welcome back to Legal Brain. Today, I'm going to discuss uh, yet another topic. So in the previous classes, uh, I was discussing about capacity to contract and what do you mean by capacity to contract, uh, in which I already discussed about age of majority and a minus contract. And in today's class, I will be discussing about persons of unsound mind and persons disqualified by law. These two categories of persons, you know who are you know, not eligible to enter into a contract or not able to be a part of the contract. So in this class, I'll be discussing about uh, these two you know, concepts. First of all, about uh, persons of unsound mind. So by virtue of section 12 of Indian Contract Act 1872, which gives a definition uh, for people who are of unsound mind and says that a person is said to be of sound mind for the purpose of making a contract if at the time when he makes it, he is capable of understanding it and of forming a rational judgment as to its effect upon his interest. And the meaning is that we can only say that a person is of sound mind if he is able to understand the situation and if he is you know, uh, able to understand what is happening, what is the nature of the contract that he is entering into, uh, you know, if he is able to do and to have a rational judgment then we can say that this particular person is a person of sound mind. If he is not at all mentally fit or if he is not able to understand the situation, uh, the nature of the contract, then we should say that this particular person is of unsound mind and he is not eligible to enter into a contract and he cannot enter into a contract. So this is uh, you know, a definition uh, by virtue of Section 12 of Indian Contract Act. And next, I'm going to discuss in detail about, you know, who all are unsound mind persons. So and now unsoundness of mind can may, it can arise from different, you know, uh, aspects. And one is idiocy, the next is lunacy or insanity, drunkenness or intoxication, mental decay, delirious persons and hypnotized persons. So these are the different category of unsoundness of mind. So I am going to discuss in detail about one by one. First is uh, idiocy, and the meaning is that a person by birth, he is an idiot. He, that means he is having unsound mind by birth, and which is natural. So an idiot is a person who is uh, congenital. That means, you know, by birth, uh, he is, you know, uh, congenital. He is a person of unsound mind. And he won't be having any rational judgment. He won't be able to understand the situation, the nature of the contract, and so on. And he is not eligible to enter into a contract since he is a person who doesn't have any rational uh, judgment. And consequently, the agreement of an idiot is absolutely void ab insure. That means void from the very beginning. And he is not personally liable even for the payment of the necessary supply to him. You know, he is not at all liable because any agreement with him will be void ab insure, void from the very beginning. Because idiocy is a state of unsoundness of mind and that arise uh, congenital. That means, you know, by birth, he is of a person of unsound mind. So this is the first category of unsoundness. A second one is lunacy or insanity, which is quite different from uh, idiocy. Uh, lunacy is not a firm state of unsoundness of mind. It is like, you know, uh, during some intervals, during certain intervals, the person can be of sound mind and in some other interval, he may be of unsound mind. So it changes. So he can enter into a contract once when he is of a person of sound mind and he cannot enter into a contract during the intervals of unsoundness of mind. That means sound means mentally fit and soundness means mentally not fit. Uh, lunacy is kind of, you know, during certain point of time, the person will be of sound mind. And other times, the person will be of unsound mind. So during the time when he of sound mind, by words of section 12, he can enter into a contract. And the next category is drunkenness or intoxication, which is more or less similar to lunacy. And the effect of drunkenness or intoxication is that once when the person is uh, normal, that means once when the person is not drunk and if he is having rational judgments to think and understand, uh, you know, about the uh, agreement, the nature of agreement and so on, he is eligible to enter into a contract. And once when he is drunk or he is intoxicated, he cannot enter into a contract. And the position of a drunken or intoxication person is just similar as that of a person of uh, lunatic. The fourth category is mental decay. 
and it mainly happens to old age people or person who have poor health. Uh, the meaning is that, for example, a person is old, you know, a person is very old and he won't be in a position to understand the nature of the contract due to mental decay, you know. If this is the situation, then you cannot enter into a contract. The next category is delirious person and the meaning is that Suppose a person is uh, terribly sick, for example, he is having high fever and he's admitted in the hospital, he is in ICU, thing like that. In that particular point of time, his uh, you know, mental ability to understand the contract, the nature of the contract, to give consent, all these things will not be you know, stable in nature. He won't be able to understand specifically, to have a very good rational judgment. It won't be possible in nature. So if the particular person is sick and in a nature that he cannot understand you know the nature of the contract he cannot enter into the contract as long as this uh, delirium last last okay and once when he is perfectly fine he is healthy he can enter into a contract once when we have a healthy body and healthy mind he can enter into a, a contract next is hypnotized person as you all know, what do you mean by hypnotism? It is like, you know, it's an artificially induced uh, sleeping situation. The one person will induce you and hypnotize you and you will fall asleep. And that is a situation. So this can be treated as a temporary incapacity, you know, uh, until the particular person is, you know, like, uh, it's a temporary thing, you know, a temporary incapacity till a person is under the effect of this artificial sleeping. So once when the person is hypnotized, he cannot give a free consent or he won't be able to understand the nature of the contract that he's entering into. If that is the situation, he should not enter into a contract and which will be void in uh, nature. Next, uh, you know, I, I was discussing about uh, section 12, sound and unsoundness of mind, discuss different category of unsound peoples. Now I'm gonna discuss next set, that is persons disqualified by law. And the meaning is that these category includes, you know, the person who are listed and who are named as disqualified persons by law. That means law is giving a restriction on this category of people from not entering into a contract. So they are alien enemies, foreign ambassadors of sovereigns, or insolvent convicts and married women. So I'm going to discuss in detail, you know, what do you mean by uh, alien enemy, foreign sovereign, insolvents, and so on. Uh, the first category is alien enemies. Alien enemies means, for example, our country, you know, alien is basically, you know, a person from like, you know, other planets, just like that. Alien meaning as a person from other country. So for example, you know, our country is in a conflict with some other country and we are not in a friendly relationship, you know, with that particular country. And if a person from that enemy country can be termed as alien enemy. Aliens can be of two categories, alien enemies and or alien friend. And this is regarding alien enemies. That means, you know, our country is not in good terms with that particular person's country. So we call him as alien enemy and who is a foreigner and who is not a subject of our country. An alien can be of, you know, two types, alien friend or alien enemy. And an alien whose country is at war with our country or whose country has not in good relationship with our country is not an alien enemy. And we are, you know, this particular alien enemies are restricted or disqualified by law from entering into a contract with us. So that is the, you know, first category. Second one is foreign ambassadors and sovereigns. So these are mainly, you know, any contract made with a foreign ambassador, ambassador of a foreign country or sovereigns or diplomatic representatives. We do have diplomatic representatives for all the countries. So if a diplomatic representative from other country or a foreign ambassador from other country, these people are not supposed to enter into a contract with us. And if it is happening, it will be void in nature. And a contract can be made with this kind of people only with the permission of Supreme Court or uh, High Court of India. So these are the second category. Third one is insolvent. Insolvents are persons who assign all their property to assign it. Like, you know, like the person will not be having any property in his name, you know, any wealth in his name. And these are the persons who are restricted from entering into a a contract because he doesn't have any money, any, you know, property, land or anything. 
Next, uh, next category is Kanwits. Kanwits means the person who are punished uh, by law, who will be undergoing imprisonment in jail. And this category of persons are restricted from entering into a contract and they can actually enter into a contract only after the completion of the imprisonment. That means after the imprisonment, once when it's done, it's allowed to enter into a contract. Next is married women. It doesn't mean that all married women are restricted from entering into the contract. It just only means that a married woman is a separate, you know, you know, separate person, separated from husband, and a woman is committed to enter into a contract only on her, you know, separate or personal property. She should not be like, you know, she cannot enter or she cannot allow to enter into a contract for her husband's property. You know, just to make it clear, married women meaning is all like married women cannot enter into a contract. That's not the meaning. The meaning is a married woman can enter into a contract only with her separate or personal property and not with her husband property. And next category is corporations. You know that co corporation is you know not a human being. It's an artificial person created by law and having a legal existence apart from its members. And corporations are you know we are not supposed to enter into a, a contract with a corporation like in in personal. So because that's an artificial body, not a natural person so these are the different set of you know persons disqualified by law so in this class i have discussed two concepts one is you know under capacity to contract i have discussed about uh, the concept of unsound mind and different kinds of un unsoundness of mind uh, next is uh, regarding the concept of uh, you know persons disqualified by law and exam point of view i hope it's clear for you if you do have any doubt do comment below i'll be responding for your query thank you for listening to me thank you